Thanks for being with us. Welcome to another production of Conforo Impresaria Latin America. Today we present Management of Pressure and Temperature Table of Refrigerant R407A. If you are a refrigeration technician, or cold generation catches your attention, stay with us, make yourself comfortable, and of course subscribe to the channel. On the screen we have the table of thermodynamic properties of the refrigerant R407A. On the left in the first column, we have the saturation temperature. In the next two columns, we have the bubble or liquid pressure, and then the vapor or spray pressure. If you are wondering why there are two types of pressures, this is because R407A gas has slippage. This sliding means that the temperature of R407A, in its transformation from liquid to vapor, or from vapor to liquid, does not remain constant. For pure refrigerants like R22, R32 or R134A, we only see one point, where a vapor starts to change to a liquid state, or a liquid starts to change to a vapor. While the change of state occurs, the temperature remains constant. The temperature glide of R407A occurs because it is not internally made up of a single gas, since it is made up of a mixture of gases, such as RON 134A at 40%, RON 125 at 40% and R32 at 20%. These gases have different boiling temperatures, which causes the compositions of the liquid and vapor phase to be different within a closed system. In an azeotropic mixture, such as R407A refrigerant, the change of state of the most volatile compounds occurs first. This causes the temperature to increase throughout the phase change, until complete evaporation occurs. The two pressures indicate that the only way for the temperature of R-407A to remain the same is for there to be a change in pressure. We are now going to know three keys to understand the handling of the R-407A table. 1. The average evaporation temperature of R-407A is located between the temperature at which the refrigerant begins to boil, at the outlet of the expansion device, and at which it stops boiling at the end of the evaporator. 2. The R-407A average temperature glide is used to find the pressure, and thereby obtain the average coil temperature. 3. For the calculation, it is considered that the pressure drop in the evaporator is practically zero. Now we are going to apply the theory that we have studied in an installation that requires a temperature of minus 20 degrees Celsius in the evaporator. 1. Since the inlet refrigerant is mostly in a liquid state, the pressure in the liquid phase is sought, which the refrigerant must have for minus 20 degrees Celsius. 2. At the exit of the evaporator, the refrigerant must be in the vapor phase. Now, since the pressure should not change in the evaporator, with the same inlet pressure value, the temperature that the refrigerant will have at the outlet, as a result of the sliding, is sought. We can see that the temperature in the vapor phase at the exit of the evaporator is minus 14 degrees Celsius. 4. So in the liquid phase at the inlet of the evaporator, the temperature is minus 20 degrees Celsius, and with that same pressure value, the temperature in the vapor phase at the outlet of the evaporator is minus 14 degrees Celsius. 5. If we analyze the temperature change between the inlet and outlet of the evaporator by sliding, it is a gain of 6 degrees Celsius. 6. We can assume that in the middle of the evaporator, the temperature has increased by half, that is, a gain of 3 degrees Celsius. 7. Since up to half, the increase is 3 degrees Celsius, in order to have minus 20 degrees C in the middle of the evaporator, we are going to adjust the inlet temperature of the liquid refrigerant to minus 23 degrees Celsius. 8. Now with that same value of minus 23 degrees Celsius, we recalculate the inlet pressure. To do this, we look for the liquid pressure which in the table has an approximate value of 2.65 bars. 9. In short, 
With this new pressure of 2.65 bars, at the inlet of the evaporator, there's a temperature of minus 23 degrees Celsius in the middle of the evaporator minus 20 degrees Celsius and at its outlet minus 17 degrees Celsius. 10. The above procedure is the way to graduate the system pressure. 11. To find the pressure that the manometer should mark, we must subtract the atmospheric pressure from the value of the table. 12. For 2.65 bars, subtract 1 bar from atmospheric pressure, resulting in 1.65 bars. 13. So the low pressure gauge should read 1.65 bars, or 24.25 psi. How to calculate the superheat with refrigerant gas R407A in an installation, with the table of properties. Follow the steps below. 1. With the installation running, with the normal thermal load of the products, measure the temperature at the outlet of the evaporator, use a thermometer with good appreciation. Let's assume a value of minus 15 degrees Celsius. 2. With low working pressure, in this case 1.65 bars gauge, or 2.65 bars absolute, look in the table for the temperature that the refrigerant in saturated vapor state should have at the outlet of the evaporator. 3. To find the value of the vapor phase temperature in the table, use the vapor pressure column. 4. With 2.65 bars pressure, the saturated steam temperature at the evaporator outlet is minus 17 degrees Celsius. 3. Subtract the temperature measured with the thermometer, in this case minus 15 degrees Celsius, from the value in the table in this case minus 17 degrees Celsius. This difference will be the superheat of the coolant. In this case the result is 2 degrees Celsius. Now so that all the terms are very clear, we are going to show and evaluate the mentioned process. 1. Here we have the pressure of the refrigerant 2.65 bars absolute pressure or 1.65 bars gauge pressure. 2. With this pressure value, the R407A refrigerant enters the evaporator with minus 23 degrees Celsius in a mostly liquid state. 3. Since the pressure in the evaporator should not change, if we want to see the temperature at the outlet, we only look in the diagram for the temperature, but now in the vapor phase. 4. We observe how the outlet temperature is now minus 17 degrees Celsius, without taking into account superheating. 5. According to what was previously said, the temperature of the refrigerant at the outlet of the evaporator, measured by the thermometer, was minus 15 degrees Celsius, thus we are located at this point. Subscribe to the channel.